Welcome to my control system playlist. In this session, I will be discussing about the most important terminologies which are used in control systems such as poles, zeros and characteristics equation. Let us understand the real meaning of poles, zeros and characteristics equation. Let me discuss poles of a transfer function first. What do we mean by pole? Moving on to definition. Poles are nothing but the roots of equation obtained by equating denominator of the transfer function to zero. That means the roots of denominator polynomial is generally called as poles. You need to calculate the roots of denominator polynomial then definitely you will be getting the number of poles. Poles can be either real or imaginary numbers. We can give one example of transfer function t of s. What is transfer function? Transfer function is nothing but it is the ratio of output to the input under s domain provided all the initial conditions are zero. So that is known as transfer function. Let us consider one transfer function that is equal to s plus z1 into s plus z2 into s plus z3 etc s plus zm whole divided by s plus p1 into s plus p2 into s plus p3 etc etc s plus pn. So this is one of the general transfer function. Now how to locate the poles? Let us say that p1, p2, p3, etc. pn are called poles of transfer function. And there are n number of poles available in the transfer function. If I want to locate the number of poles, what I can do is equate the denominator polynomial. That means s plus p1 into s plus p2 into s plus p3, etc. s plus pn that is equal to 0. So that you can identify the location. So whenever it is equating to 0, I will be getting s equal to minus p1. Location of the pole can be written as s equal to minus p1. Similarly, s equal to minus p2. Then s equal to minus p3. Likewise, you can locate where the poles are locating at the real axis or imaginary axis. You can identify. So this is the way how to calculate the poles. In general, we can say that equate the denominator polynomial that is equal to 0. From that, I can able to calculate the roots. I can able to calculate the value of s that is equal to poles. I will be explaining with the help of an example. One transfer function is provided for you. That is equal to s plus 1 divided by s into s plus 3 into s minus 2. How do you calculate number of poles? Now what you can do? Equate the denominator. What is denominator? s into s plus 3 into s minus 2. That is equal to 0. Now you can able to calculate the value of poles. That is equal to you have to calculate the number of roots. That means first root is equal to 0. S is equal to 0. From this I can write S equal to 0. Similarly, S plus 3 equal to 0. If S plus 3 is equal to 0, S equal to minus 3. And one more root is available. S minus 2 should be equated to 0. From that I will be getting S equal to 2. Let me know how many number of poles are available. There are three poles. Here we can say that three poles are available in the transfer function. So this is the way how to determine number of poles. And you can identify the location of pole. These are the location of pole. One pole is locating at the origin. Similarly, one pole is locating at minus 3. Other pole is locating at 2. That means one pole will be locating in the left half of S plane. Other pole, are, other pole is locating at the right half of S plane. So this is the way how to identify and how to determine number of poles of a given transfer function. Let me move on another example. 2 divided by S square minus 6 S plus 8. This is one of the transfer function. You can identify number of poles and the value of poles you can identify. That means equate the denominator. That means S square minus 6S plus 8 that is equal to 0. From this you can able to calculate the value of S. You can use quadratic. This is one of the quadratic equation. You can able to calculate the value of S. Or else in a shortcut manner you can calculate. That means S minus 2 by considering the factors into S minus 4 that is equal to 0. Therefore, we can identify how many number of poles are there. There are two poles. That means there are two number of roots will be available. The, definitely we can say that number of poles will be equal to number of roots. That means two roots are available. So, we can identify the value of pole. S minus 2 equal to 0. Therefore, S equal to 2. Similarly, S minus 4 equal to 0. Therefore, S equal to 4. So, these are the values of poles. That means the poles are locating at the right half of S plane. We can say. Now let me move on. What do we mean by zeros of a transfer function? Zeros are the roots of equation obtained by equating numerator of the transfer function to zero. 
you need to consider the numerator of the transfer function that should be equated to zero then you can able to calculate the value of that particular s yes, for that particular variable then obviously that particular value will be zeros zeros can be either real or imaginary that is also possible let us consider a general transfer function t of s is given by s plus z1 into s plus z2 etc etc s plus z m upon s plus p1 into s plus p2 etc etc s plus p n here if we equate the numerator polynomial to zero you can able to calculate how many number of zeros are available moreover you can identify the values of zeros say z1 z2 etc z m are known as zeros of the system then if you want to locate the position of zero you need to equate the value of s plus z1 to zero similarly s plus z2 to zero then s plus z m to zero then you can able to trace where the zeros are locating moreover here m number of zeros will be available now let us study how to calculate number of zeros in a transfer function consider a given transfer function t of s that is equal to s plus 2 into s minus 1 divided by s cube plus 3 s square plus 2 s plus 1 now how to calculate zeros so we equate the numerator of the transfer function that is equal to zero s plus 2 into s minus 1 that is equal to zero from this you can able to calculate the value of s so first let us consider s plus 2 is equal to zero therefore s equal to minus 2 likewise you can equate s minus 1 equal to 0 from that you can able to calculate s equal to 1 we can conclude that there are two number of zeros number of zeros are two two zeros are available there the position of zeros at s equal to minus 2 and s equal to 1 so this is the way how to calculate the position of zeros and how many number of zeros are available in that given transfer function both poles and zeros that is very essential for determining the stability so by understanding by analyzing the value of poles and zero we can predict the stability okay for example if the poles are locating at the right half of s plane then we will say that system is unstable if the poles are locating at the left half of s plane then we will say that system is stable suppose if the poles are locating at the origin then we will say that system is marginally stable i will be explaining uh, this concept whenever I am going to explain the stability stability of a control system now let us discuss what do we mean by characteristics equation moving on to definition the equation obtained by equating the denominator of a transfer function to zero whose roots are poles of the transfer function is called characteristics equation so that is the definition of uh, the characteristics equation what you are supposed to do is you need to consider a transfer function and you need to equate the denominator polynomial to zero. Then that particular equation is known as characteristic equation. Let's consider one transfer function. T of s is given by a naught s to the power m plus a1 s to the power m minus 1 plus a2 s to the power m minus 2 plus etc etc plus am whole divided by b naught s to the power n plus b1 s to the power n minus 1 plus b2 s to the power n minus 2 plus etc etc bn. Now, to calculate the characteristic equation or to find out the characteristic equation you need to equate the denominator polynomial this is the denominator polynomial that should be equated to zero then if you calculate the roots then that particular roots will be called obviously poles of a particular transfer function here we can observe b0 b1 b2 bn etc are known as constants so this is the way how to calculate characteristic equation here I have called f of s is the value of characteristic equation. So if f of s that is equal to 0, then it becomes an equation. That particular equation is known as characteristic equation. Consider a given transfer function. g of s is given by 3s plus 2 divided by s square plus 4s plus 8. Here, how to write the characteristic equation? Look at the denominator polynomial. That means s square plus 4s plus 8. That is equal to 0. So this is known as characteristic equation. If you calculate the roots of this characteristic equation, then I will be getting number of poles. I can able to locate the number, I can able to locate the poles and I will be getting the total number of poles which is available in the given transfer function. So that is a peculiarity of the characteristic equation. In this session, we have discussed about the importance of poles, zeros and characteristic equation. In the upcoming session, I am going to discuss about type and order of a given transfer function. That is very important. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this channel more interesting, please do subscribe. Thank you very much.